All right, we're going to start the lecture on uh, hypothesis testing. I got me a fresh deck of cards. How many deck of cards have you bought on yourself because you're like not bought? Uh, and have I collect decks of cards? Oh, really? Yeah, I have hundreds of decks of cards. Everywhere I travel, when we travel somewhere, my wife gets a magnet and I get a deck of cards. They're usually cheap and there's something you can use. Where the fuck is this little... Alright, this is fucking ridiculous. All right, uh, oh shit, slideshow. All right. Good show. I'm not going to do that. Doesn't help with it all in fucking order, right? Now, <laughs> I guess I should put the this up on the screen. Let's change it for our Zoom viewers. Oh gosh, it's doing that. Right, so. Yeah, this is the, uh, you have to give a lecture when you're being interviewed. And this was the lecture that got me hired. So let's play a game. Those of you that are in here saw me open or try to open fucking deck of cards for like a minute and a half. Brand new deck of cards. Uh, we're gonna play a game. You can draw a card, and if it's uh, if it's black, you're gonna get two extra credit points on the fine. Everybody will get it. And if it's red, you'll have a couple extra problems. Now, on your behalf, that's a good thing. Like if there's a hundred problems on the test and missing one, you only lose one percent. If there's two problems on the test and you miss one, you fail. So like having more problems isn't necessarily a bad thing. But if you draw a black card, you'll get an extra credit, or draw a red card, you got more uh, more problems on the test. Who would like to draw a card? Anyone want any extra credit on the test? Are you trying to do your probability? You're gonna pull. All right. 
You got the jack of hearts. All right, so put it back in. We don't want to change probability. It should be half and half, right? So that's one red. Yeah, with who? Do you guys not want to be replacing it? You want to stack it in your favor? He was trying to do the math for it. Anyone else want to draw? King of hearts. Actions. Put that in the middle. Oh, yeah. Three nines, another red. Anybody else? Another red. Nine hearts. So good. I'm not going to do that. Anybody else? All right. All right. Let's take it. Let's, let's not do the request. We'll take it out. There's already four marks against you. You guys are That's the first for the rest of the world. Yeah. Everyone is actually Yeah. I'm king of diamonds now. All right. Anybody else? Now there's more black than red. Yeah. You think you can break the curse? Yeah. But someone that I like to like men. Yeah, it's red. Oh, there was ten. Here's a rocket show up now. Wait, that's for for all of us or just the first yeah. show of red? I'm not holding track of who drew what. I just I just give everybody answer to questions. It's okay. <laughs> you don't have to draw. Yes, I do because I didn't know why. You don't sure what that other folks are. Well, maybe you'll be lucky. <laughs> oh, don't do that. Yeah, right. Knocking out the cackle. Oh, wow. Well, uh, wow. All right. Anybody check the door? Well, we'll check after what? It's everybody's what? done. <laughs> That's not the rude. You saw me open. Yeah, you did open it. You did open that one. So. Hey, we're out of it. It's a magic card. It's a faulty deck. What the fuck is a faulty deck? That's like throwing dice. This is <laughs> this is nothing but real. Yeah. All right. So sounds like you guys are done after about ten draws. All right. So let's go on with our lecture and we'll discuss the shit. Starting with your fucking bold accusations that I'm a fucking cheat. That's your magic right there. I opened the fucking deck. You saw it. Did you show black? Did anybody see black cards? No. They, they go look, there's black and red. Yeah, prove it. Man. Black card. Because what? Why don't you wait till the left here and see what happens? <laughs> well, this said six red card. You guys do more than that. I know where you're buying your drinks at. Uh, so, am I cheating you? Or are you, are you just, just fucking unlucky people? Cheat. I would say unlucky. That's the best answer, Amar, even though it's not. Everybody else is against you. They all think I'm a fucking cheat. How much have we spent to cheat, Esther? I've been nothing but straightforward with you guys. That's not fair. So if we'd only done six red cards, you have like doing probability, you multiply it a half times a half times a half. You guys do fucking 10 cards. Where's my calculator? What is one half to the tenth power? Red. <laughs> Point five raised to the second red. Point zero 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 nine seven. So, point oh one percent chance that that could happen, but it can't happen. In fact, your odds of winning the lot are, are less than that. Okay. So you might be going, okay, like in a thousand trials, we had, can I write on this? I can. 
I had 0.00097 something when I did 0.5 in the 10th power. And so when we move the decimal over this far, we got 0 0.097%. Or about 0.1%. Now, in a thousand trials, we could expect to see, if I multiply this by a thousand, it would have moved the decimal over three times. We could have expected to see it once, drawing this many 10 red cards in a row, this that many red cards in a row. But it can happen. So either I'm really lucky. Well, I don't know if I'm really lucky. I got fucked. I'm going to have to grade a whole lot more. I need to rethink this. This is a bad plan. Now I have more to fucking grade. They chose those cards. Or, or this, the deck is stacked against you. Your odds of winning were even. You could have been a con. And that's what it sounds like you guys are going with. Uh, so this is... Oh, I need to... It's clear it's all. <laughs> so hypothesis testing, you made, this is a, what hypothesis testing is. You made an assumption when you saw me open the deck that the deck was half black and half red. So the probability of drawing a black was half, 50%, 0.5. Uh, and then as we went along, we started drawing cards and uh, you started gathering evidence that looks like it's contradicting that assumption. Like you didn't draw a black card, i.e. you didn't draw a black card. So that's kind of like how hypothesis happens. We have an idea. Usually we intentionally have the idea and it's not thrust upon us like your teacher just did. Uh, and then we go out and collect evidence and analyze the data. That's what a hypothesis testing go about. What is a hypothesis though? It's a statement about a characteristic of one or more of or one or more populations. Uh, we will start off doing a single population in chapter 10. Uh, in chapter 11, we switch to doing two populations like guys versus girls, before versus after, shit like that. Uh, and in chapters 12 and 13, we have more than two populations or more than two groups. Not necessarily populations, but groups. Uh, right now, we're just going to focus on doing one population. Parameter, if you don't remember, that's like proportion or mean or standard deviation. It's something we can get from summarizing our data. Uh, so here's some examples of some statements that we could make that are hypothesis test. These were all real at the time I made them. I looked up data. The percentage of milk fat in California yeah, dairy milk in 2012 was 3.72%. Researchers believe that a change in diet has changed the percentage of milk fat content. What parameter is this statement talking about? Is it talking about proportion? Is it talking about mean? Is it talking about standard deviation? What does it look like it might be talking about? Yes. So what's the percentage make you think of? 3.72. Do we usually have a mean that has a percentage in it? What what statistic usually has a percentage in it? A lot of crickets. Oh, shit. This is a proportion. Proportions are x over n. Uh, it gives us a decimal, just like we had, and then we can turn it to a percentage. So here they're saying p is 3.72%. What does researchers believe a change in diet has changed the percentage 
of milk plaque content. What is what are the researchers saying about this peak? Do they think it's bigger? Do they think it's smaller? What does that mean? Could have gone down. Change, though, doesn't really indicate what direction it's going to go up. It could have gone up. We don't really know. I would suspect it's gone down. But maybe researchers think it hasn't gone down. Maybe they, they think it's gone out. Taking fat out of milk is a process. And I think the less you have to do it, the more money you save in operations. Maybe they're trying to save a buck or two. Uh, we're not clear what they're going with. So we're going to say P is not equal to 3.72%. And I'll have this information on the slide in a second. But just like tearing apart a statement while we're looking at it. And generally, we would not write these as percentages. We would switch them to a number without percentages. Okay. Some of these links don't work anymore. This was a while back. You saw what I made in the slide, 2018. That was that isn't the right date. I know it isn't because I think I got hired in fucking. 17. So I don't know what the hell that shit's about. Oh, wait. wait. Yeah, it was 18. I had worked two years at that point, though. Okay, so for every inch in increase in standard deviation of plant to plant spacing, the corn grain yield rate drops approximately 2.2 bushels per acre. Uh, this is something they found out at Purdue. Uh, now, this part is fabricated for the story here, but a new corn planting machine was revealed at the World Ag Expo, uh, claiming it had decreased the standard, devi standard, devi uh, standard deviation below that of its former model, which had a standard deviation of 4.5 inches. What parameter are they talking about here? You only have so many options. You get P, you get X bar, or you get uh, sigma. That's not sigma. Sigma. Oh, I'm going to fucking decimate you guys in the fucking final. It's the sigma, right? It's the sigma. Why? Because it says standard deviation. It fucking says standard deviation. It's exactly correct. So it's about standard deviation. The former model was 4.5 inches. And the machine is claiming that it's decreased it. So this is the old news. And the new, new idea is, has that gone up or down? What's decreased mean? It means it's gone down, which means it should be less than. So we're gonna go with the less than sign here. So we kind of have two ideas. This is how hypothesis testing can work. We're gonna have two ideas, the old one and the new idea. Let me clear that out and go to the next slide. The average final exam score for statistics students was 73%. We believe, believe the use of computers and statistics courses has increased the average grade students receive on their finals. What parameter are we talking about here? We're talking about the mean. Let me get my marker back out. We're talking about the mean and what did it use to equal? What's my old news?
it was 73%. In this case, we have a percentage on a mean. It doesn't happen very often, but we're talking about test scores, so it's that's what you get. What do they think has changed? It increased. It's increased. What's that mean mathematically? That means um, it's now greater than 73 It's now greater than 73%. Exactly. So again, we have an old claim, uh, the old claim, and the new claim. Now, there's no way that we can pull or collect information. We have it. So the information exists in the world of one every student got on their final last semester throughout the United States. But it is not all collected in one spot and trying to email every fucking college professor in the United States, let alone the world, on what they got on their first statistics course, what was their final exam, this is would be murderous to get. So we're not, this is still a claim. That there's no way they collected the old information. It was based on previous data, but now our new assumption is this is the new claim. All right. So hypothesis testing is a procedure that we're going to use probability and evidence from samples, collect some data to choose between two competing hypotheses about a characteristic of one or more populations. The null hypothesis is a claim about a population characteristic that is assumed to be true. This is usually, and I'm going to go with a very, very high percentage here, like 99.99999% of the time, this is usually the old shit. There's no reason for it to be the new stuff. The null hypothesis goes by the characters HO. It's like a, it's a subscript, the O, they pronounce it H not or HO, either one works. Uh, this hypothesis test indicates there's no change. HO is always going to have an equal sign in it. Okay. It's a statement of equality, so it needs to have an equal sign. I need to slow down because I forget when I'm not writing it and I have a pre-made PowerPoint. I go as fast as I can fucking read it and discuss it, but people are taking notes. Damn, you guys are just fucking that well, really unlucky. He still does it looking functionally sharp. I think a lot of the if you're not right, if you've been waiting, just been paying attention, I will upload this slideshow later. Okay. But if you are taking this, you will you yourself with the fire oh. event. What? Like if you've got if you rest them, surround them with a heat gun and then say, oh, I will. Have you ever tried to do a fucking heat gun on this shit? Yes. It's a letter. Or not. And it fucking it doesn't shrivel. Cellophane fucking shrinks really fucking fast. They are already sealed perfectly. Just imagine him laughing while he's if, if, if I tried to put flame to it, it would have fucking <laughs> fucked it up. That's just insulting. Fire. Do a fucking classic thing. All right. Let's see if that stays in the way or gets out of the way. Wait, someone was still writing. Let me go back. I'm afraid it was right. He stuff to talk shit about his professor and accuse him of cheating. Even coming up with a method to it. Ever since I saw your slide at the beginning of the semester, where we were at NASA and there was two sun, there was two shadows on your slide. I was like, there's two shadows on my slide. I don't remember that. I mean, look. I don't remember that. It was an animated thing that I got from NASA, so it, I can't imagine them fucking out, but it's quite possible. Counting shadows, that's some deep shit right there. 
Start. Onward. Yep, that's in the way. Let me get it out of the road. Get it away. All right. So the alternate hypothesis, uh, the alternative or alternate hypothesis, is usually denoted H A. Sometimes it's denoted as H one. So H one or H A. I go with H A. Because then we have H O and we we have H A. We have ho oh, oh, ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho and we have ha 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 ha. Easy to remember. Uh, this is the statement we're usually trying to gather evidence to support. It's the new idea. And it will have an inequality in it. We saw a few circumstances that inequalities we could have is not equal to. We could have greater than or we could have less than. I'm getting better at finding silly markers. That that red thing, you know, like cigarette wrappers have it too. It's supposed to have a little thing that sticks out so you can get your nail on it, but there was nothing. I had to fucking dig it open with a button pen. If you were, you know, on time to class, Alfredo, you would have seen that rather than making these bold accusations. You know what else? Man, see any blackbirds? I haven't seen any jack yet. That's right. It's fact that <laughs> that's the fucking thing here right there. Oh, I gotta click on the slide. All right, so. Uh, the three different types of tests that we'll see, at least the basic setup of what's going on here. Uh, we will have setups where we will have an equal portion to, fuck, and then we can have a non-equal to. Any of the statistics can fall in here. It could have been mean, it could have been standard deviation. It just happened to be in this problem proportion. Uh, this one is called a two-tailed test when it's not equal to. Uh, what we're looking at when we do this, uh, for those of, the, of you that have done the confidence interval homework or started it, the confidence interval is checking within a certain area. And this two-tailed test is checking to see if it's outside, if it's not equal to what's in the middle. So it could be in either tail, and that's why it's called the two-tailed test. Uh, in every circumstance, we will have H0 is the parameter that's equal to something, and HA is the parameter that is either not equal to, less than, or greater than. In the one on milk fat, we had this. I'm actually going to leave that up, so we might use it on the next slide. All right, the next one is called a left-tailed test. It's when we have less than. Uh, this is usually because we are checking to see if it's over here. Less than is on the left. If you look at this like an arrowhead, the less than symbol, and you just put a line in it, it tells you which way it's pointing. It looks like an arrowhead. That's one way to remember the type of tail. I'm not going to ask you on the final what type of what tail test it is, but they might ask you on the homework and just look at the inequality symbol and see what it says. If it's not equal, it's two tail. If it's an arrowhead pointing to the left, it's left tail. And guess what happens on the next slide? 
when we have greater than. What test will that be called? Right it's going to be called right tail that's pointing to the right. So if it's greater than and it points to the right, we have a right tail test, as we'll see on the next slide. But again, parameter H0 is the equal one. HA is the one that has an inequality symbol. And here we see the right tail test. And for the same reason, we're looking for stuff that's greater than. Greater than is larger numbers. And the larger numbers are to the right. All right, now I'm going to get all that writing up this slide the screen. Um, all right, let me make sure this is the next one. Okay, so we have two hypotheses. The null hypothesis, or H0, and the alternative or alternate hypothesis. The null hypothesis is very much like a non-guilty verdict, okay? It's what we're going to assume is true. You assume H0 is true. It's the old information. It's been around a while. It's stuff that you've read a research article on before, and that's what they had... Conducted, and we're assuming it's true. Whereas the other thing in a court of law is guilty. You either have not guilty or guilty. Those are the, the two pleas. These kind of correlate to the defendant is innocent and the defendant is guilty, but they're not quite the same. Innocent and not guilty while I sound the same, aren't the same thing. What's the difference in law? I know enough of you have seen fucking law shows on TV. What, are, what happens when the defendant is found not guilty? They're free to go. They're free to go, but it's based on what? There wasn't enough proof to make them guilty. There wasn't enough proof to convict them of guilt. They might have been guilty. A fucking true mastermind can get away with something. It's looking a little harder in today's day. Wow. What's Alfredo's last name? Alfredo's got an F in it, right? It's it's they didn't prove they were guilty. That doesn't mean they were innocent. So that's why the court never the the verdict is never your innocence because that's making a flat out statement that you didn't do it. And what's really being said in the court of law is we don't have anything that definitive that says you did it. That doesn't mean you didn't find the smoking gun yet or something like that. And in America, generally, if you've been charged with a criminal charge and you're found not guilty, they can't get you on the same one next time when they find new evidence. You're kind of like, you got off. You got off luck. Uh, and that's what this slide talks about. Uh, and the same thing happens in the hypothesis testing. We are gathering our evidence from a sample. We are not doing the entire population. So we could, just like the confidence interval stuff had show up, we could ask a group that's just had a shitload of fucking outliers. And our evidence, our sample, doesn't really relate to what's real. We're not going to know. We're just not going to know. Uh, so we're hypo the hypothesis testing. We're going to try to get as much evidence as we can. But the only way you get 100% is do the entire population. And time and money says that ain't happening. Okay. It's kind of helpful to think of it like that. The null hypothesis is the one we're assuming it's true. We're trying to support the new hypothesis. Whether we can or not, we may not have enough evidence to do it, and it doesn't mean it's wrong or right. So there's a couple outcomes we can have. We can reject the null hypothesis. 
If the null hypothesis is true, it would be surprising with the evidence we've collected. If the probability of drawing a black card from this deck is 50%, you would say, and that was our null hypothesis, the idea that this deck was a fair deck, 50-50, with the evidence you've collected, it would be surprising if this is a fair deck, right? So maybe there's something to this, these heinous accusations you're fucking throwing around. When this happens, we say that the results are statistically significant. We'll cover that more a little bit later. Uh, it's easier to see statistical significance when you compare it to practical significance. And that's a required example. Uh, but when we do, we're always gonna end up making a, a, a statement that says we either support our claim or we reject the claim. But there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that HA is true in this case. When we make a statement, the statement is always, 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 always about HA. Well, that's the one we're trying to decide on. H not, the old information is always assumed, already assumed it was right. So like, you weren't gonna come along and go, yeah, uh, we did all this research again and yeah, the old shit was right. No, it's like whether or not the new idea was right. Now, the other outcome we could have is we could fail to reject the null hypothesis. If the null hypothesis is true, it would, wouldn't be surprising. Now, you all fucking accuse me of using a fake deck here, but if you had drawn five black cards or out of five, or better yet, 10 black cards instead of 10 red cards, you would have all been adamant that the deck was fucking fair and you just got lucky. So it's all about your amount. You wouldn't have said, no, he probably. He just wanted to give us a bunch of extra credit. None of you are going to think that I cheated on your behalf. So, like, you wouldn't reject it. Uh, but if it was half and half, if we did like, you've got like five black, five red, or six black, four red, or four red, six black, something where it's close to half and half, you've been like, yeah, I would never have fucking called Mr. Jones a cheat. No, that is, uh, that is, uh, um, you don't have sufficient evidence to say that we are all selfish and only want extra credit and not extra um, questions on that. If we drew four black and four red, that is 50%, which means there isn't evidence to reject the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis was the proportion of black cards was 50%. Not the whether or not I'm a cheat or whether or not you're, that's just flavor text. The question was, was the deck the assumption we made correct? And it was an assumption. You saw me unwrap it, you assumed the deck was fair. Again, when we do a supporting claim or a, a claim that doesn't support it, it's always about HA. We don't have an evident, enough evidence to support HA. We're not going to say, don't say HA is false or not true. Because just like uh, the not guilty, we we may just have a bad evidence. We, so we don't say it's wrong. We just say we don't have evidence to support it. Does that make sense? All right. Let me pause a little bit. There was a lot on that slide. People are still writing. We all start sorting these. The colors.
All right, next slide. So we can make errors. Just like we could convict an innocent person, we could reject the null hypothesis even though it's true. This could be like we're collecting information on milk fat and we just happen to get a bunch of fucking gallons of milk that had too much milk fat in it or too little milk fat, but probably not both. If we had both, then it would have averaged into the right range and we would have said the proportion was right. This is called a type one error. The sample evidence did not provide enough evidence to, to reject the null hypothesis, but you said it's wrong anyways. Okay? A bunch of you will do this on the exam. You will reject it even though it's true. It's going to happen. It's going to be sad because, like, after if you do your homework and you're doing the homework and following the lectures and asking questions, there is no reason you can't get like above a 90% on this final. There are all the steps are very similar. You're just making comparisons. You guys see. The other thing we could do is we could fail or reject it when we should have. Like it's flat out wrong. There was a substantial amount of evidence to reject the idea that this deck was fair. And if you just went ahead and said, no, I'm going to trust Mr. Jones. The evidence says that you should have accused me of cheating or at least having an unfair debt. Well, you saw me open it, so maybe I just got unlucky or you got unlucky and it came to me that way. Maybe I was able to buy a deck that was all red. Would I pay extra money for that now? This seems to be possible. For a For a what? I think I'd spend money on you guys? <laughs> Uh, and this is like letting a guilty person walk free. One of these is preferable to the other. Which one do we not want to do? Whatever. Whatever the case is, we don't want to do it. Think of it in terms of the, the convicting an innocent or letting the guilty walk. Which scenario do we not want to happen? They're both kind of shitty, but like... There's a trade-off. You can you like accept the evidence or you don't. You could make an error. Which one do we lean in favor of trying to avoid at all costs? We do not want to convict the innocent. We'd rather let the guilty fucking walk. Because if you're guilty, well, there's a good chance you'll fucking do it again. You get caught and you will justice will come. But having injustice happen where someone is locked up or even worse, put on death row and executed for a crime they didn't fucking commit is horrendous. You ruin their life, you ruin their family's life, and even if they get out, depending on the crime, you may have, like, even if you provide, find evidence later on, five years later, even a year later, that they were innocent, they're going to have that fucking flag hanging over the head, especially if it's a fucked up crime. Like you said, someone was a, a pedophile lost the children and you found evidence that you thought was they were guilty of but it turns out they didn't do it and you found out later on letting them out of prison doesn't fucking fix the problem their friends and family may know yeah they got off but the neighbors the neighbors fucking go pedophile lives there and you're fucking like it's you're fucked so we don't want to convict the innocent uh, we don't want to reject the null hypothesis if it's true. It's the old information. We're, we're going to lean in favor of that. And so we're going to do our, we're going to choose new numbers when we're doing the testing that make that happen. Uh, this is very much like why when we're doing that bell curve, we're looking for shit that's way out here in the tails where if this part is 95% likely in the middle, there's only 5% in the tails. 5% is unlikely. 
That's what we call unlikely stats, 5%. So we're going to try to, to have our shit happen like that. Uh, so we can assign probabilities to making these types of errors, type 1 error, type 2. Type 1 is rejecting H0 when H0 is true. Uh, I'm not going to ask you about type 1 error, type 2 error, uh, but alpha is really important in everything we're going to do. And it comes from uh, this being an error and the error we're trying to avoid. So in general, we want alpha... as low as reasonably possible, unless it is not important. Alpha is called the level of significance. I will say level of significance fucking repeatedly for the rest of the semester. We hear alpha and level significance in the lot. You will unlike you're unlikely to bring say type one error again. But it is, it does come from uh, us having data where it's unlikely to happen. Oops, people are still writing. Oh, that was it. When you're done writing, I will do a little reveal. Let's see what's the best way to do this. Just look back a good way. I like this. So let's go back to, let me change this to sharing over that. And we'll change this back to the document camera. Now, I did open a new deck. I opened it an hour before I came to class. And I opened it from the bottom of the deck. So I ended up with the sale thing. Very, and I, the other deck has all black in it. Yes, this deck was all red. So I won't throw an extra fucking 20 questions on your test. these days. I, I've done it before. I didn't think about it. I've done it where I brought in a fucking standard deck in my pocket, and while I was walking back here, fucking reach in and pull it out and put that one out. Fucking stand that motherfucker when I got up here so that everybody felt hella bad for calling me a fucking cheat. That's a, that's a fine walk right there. Uh, let's take a 10 minute break and then we'll talk some more. Okay, resume recording, talk about some more stuff. All right, so we said alpha is a type one error. I lied apparently earlier and said, I wouldn't say it again, and here I am saying it again. It's what we want to try to avoid. So in general, we make this as low as possible. So ultimately where this is gonna go 
when we're doing our testing, our testing is going to give us something called a p-value. Our hypothesis test will give us a p-value. I get tired of writing p-value, and I usually end up just calling this p-value because I am lazy enough to say two fucking letters while I'm writing it. What? You still talking shit over there? Oh. Bowl play? This is not a safe space. Well, I don't abuse students. They're safe in that regard. But if you lost a cat, you might get offended when I say, uh, make a comment about there's more, one, more than one way to stand a cat. It's happened. I've had a student cry. That was not the semester that they accused me of making a student cry. Like, I did say, I've said that before. My, that's, that's the phrase my mom used to say. And when there's more than one way to get something done, there's more than one way to skin the cat. And I, I said that in one class, and one student just started fucking bawling. They're like, my cat died this week. And I'm like, I felt bad. But I'm like, I felt bad. And then later I'm like, but do you can't get skin? No. He saw that when he his dog got ran over and made fun of him. Oh, Brian. Yeah, Brian's dog. He got ran over and made fun of him. It should have been dead a long time ago. We were sitting in class. Yeah. I said his dog should have been dead a long time ago. No, something. Yeah, got ran over. Let's call it dumb. A dog that gets run over is kind of dumb. I'm just saying. Where's Brian? Did he drop it, man. Probably you will know, <laughs> yeah, just, just fucking like I'm in the fucking cell. Oh. I'm just gonna keep asking this guy today. There's, no. there's, there's trust issues. Yeah. There's no longer a safe space. So all right, hypothesis all right. test is gonna give us a P value. And where we're going with this. I'm going to, we're, this is going to help like decide on what we want to use for alphas. Uh, if the p-value is less than alpha, we will reject h naught and we will support ha. And I will say this repeatedly, and this is hopefully the way you remember it. If the p-value is too low, Reject the hoe. Tell <laughs> Santa off. Yeah, I'm going with that one. Giggle, but you're going to remember it. Even if you don't want to remember it, you will. If you don't like that version of it, there's another one. If the p-value is too low, the null must go. But that's just so not catchy. And must go does like reject or not reject. It's kind of easier to remember than saying one must go. And if the p-value is not too low, i.e. the p-val is greater than alpha, this one is the knots. That's what I call it, the knots. We do not reject h naught. We do not support HA. There was not enough evidence to support the claim. And the PDL was not too low. So, so 
So with this kind of logic in place, I know, wait, it's like you guys have tried it. All right. So with this kind of logic in place, we want alpha to be low. Uh, we will usually use alpha equals 0 0.05 or 5% is the equivalent of it, is a default, is the default setting for alpha. If you're reading an article that has statistical stuff, and they use the p-value and alpha approach, and they don't tell you what alpha is, which is unlikely, they usually will. If it doesn't say what alpha is, use 0 0.05. That is the Greek letter alpha. Have we talked about alpha and beta before? What? Okay. This is well, this is not really related to where we're going, but this is here's your fun fucking fact for the day. Alpha is the first Greek letter. is the second Greek letter. Now, if you're old enough, this looks like something that VCRs used to be called. It's the Betamax. VCRs used to be called Betamax. I think it was a brand. Beta. And a lot of people, I pronounce it beta, a lot of people pronounce this letter beta. Uh, and I was in grad school, and my English teacher, not my English teacher, my, he was my teacher, he was English, he was from England. Uh, he used to make fun of us stupid Americans for calling Z, Z. Everywhere else calls Z, Z. Z is like, was made for the alphabet song. We, the Americans did change the character Z to call it Z because it rhymed with fucking B. And Z did not. Everyone else calls it Z. So he, he would say, you stupid Americans, he liked to fucking do this. I still like it. He's great. Uh, and he would say beta too. And after, after the first time he called us stupid Amer Americans, the next time he said beta, there was a student in the class that was Greek. She's like, you stupid English people, it's called beta. It's actually pronounced that uh, it's not beta, it's beta. Uh, and it makes sense. If you think about it, the first two letters are alpha and beta. Alpha, bet. So that's where the name alphabet comes from. There's your fucking completely unrelated Fucking, let's not think about statistics for a second. Have a fun fact. So alpha equals 0 0.05. That's going to be our default setting. Uh, sometimes you may want to make it higher. If it's low stakes, and you don't really care if you're wrong, mind having a bigger chance of an error. We might go higher. Alpha could be 0 0.1 or 10%. Generally, we do increments of five uh, until you get down too low and you can't go down lower. Uh, I've seen, not in anything technical, but I've seen people use 20, 
but it's ridiculous. You don't want a one in five chance of being wrong. But if this is something like we're talking about, like the topic is stocking a vending machine, you're like, I don't really give a fuck. If we're wrong, we'll just find out in the next batch that, you know, the fucking potato chips with fucking salt and vinegar weren't selling as well as we thought. So we pull them and put something in next time. And if you might have 10%, like, Comma ones here would be 0 0.05, 0 0.10, uh, maybe 0 0.15. Unlikely to go lower. If the topic is open heart surgery, uh, 5% chance error seems kind of fucking large. Like, if I was going to have open heart surgery or any type of fucking surgery that could kill me, uh, if it goes wrong and I found out the doctor had a 5% fail rate, I'd probably want a different doctor or a fucking researcher around and go, is that as low as it gets? And then it's, then it's like, how important is this surgery? Ah, if it's like to get rid of cancer, yeah, I would do it. Because, like, that is going to kill you. So I'll take the fucking 95% chance of a win and the 5% chance of a loss in that case. But if it's like you've got fucking you make up your nose makes a funny sound when you, I don't know, the deviated septum or whatever the fuck it's called. I don't remember how bad that is. I don't know. It doesn't sound like it's a, that bad of a thing to me. I'm not risking going under a fucking, if you could fucking kill me. Some things are not going to risk. Uh, but on something like that, we might, you know, alpha equals 0 0.05 might be too high. We might go down to 0 0.01, which is 1%, or 0 0.001, which is 0.1%. And this alpha... This alpha is directly related to confidence intervals. Alpha is in the in the tails. Out here. And my confidence interval represents this. So if the confidence interval goes down, if CI goes down, Alpha has to get longer or bigger. Alpha goes up. And we make our confidence interval bigger. Now, yeah, alpha is very small. And there's an equation for this, but I think the pictorial version helps.
The one that sat with two girls, right? No. Well, that's where the other guy sat with the two girls, too. Yeah, but she's pointing this direction. So like, I don't know exactly what Brian's at. Uh, so either way, one of them was the daughter of a former student. And I brought it up on the first day because her mom said, my daughter's in your class. And then I didn't bring it up again, but I'd been fucking waiting. I talked to the student's mom after that. I'm like, she's really embarrassed. She's probably, she probably came home and yelled at you. And she goes, no, she didn't say anything. I'm like, and we started plotting. We were going to wait until sometime after the midterm and just have them show up on Zoom. Because Zoom, we can watch it home. There's like some of you have watched it from home. I was just going to send them the link and then let mom pop on the camera and do part of the thing and just embarrass the fuck shit out of her. And she hasn't been back. This makes me sad. It was it was a very devious. That would have been the evil jefe that Alfredo has been accusing me of today. All right. So how does CI and Alpha relate mathematically? On two-tailed tests. The confidence interval is one minus alpha times a hundred percent. If we use the default of alpha equals 0 0.05, one minus 0 0.05 times a hundred percent is 95%. So 95% confidence there. The two-tailed test, though, it's like half the alpha is broken up into each wing. Half of alpha is over here and half of alpha is over here. So when we don't have a two-tailed test, on a one-tailed test, we're only looking on one side of it. So we don't want to use what one half alpha. What we're going to do so that our confidence interval matches up with what we have uh, so this is when we have for HA less than or greater than for HA. This one is HA is not equal to. On this one, we're going to do one minus two alpha times a hundred percent. So here, alpha of zero point zero five. 1 minus 2 times 0 0.05 times 100% is only a 90% confidence interval. And how does that work? Well, the confidence interval is in the middle. We got our 90% is in here, which means the 10% is divided between the two sides. There's 5% over here, and there's 5% over here. And since we're only doing one tail, we now have, if we're doing less than, we now have a 5% error chance. So that's kind of like how, how it's working. I'm not going to ask you to switch between confidence interval and alpha, but the homework might occasionally have you go like what confidence interval or what, what percentage interval is associated with the alpha. I don't think it happens too much. It's not, not going to be on that test. But you will have a project and you're going to need to do a confidence interval and this p value alpha test thing that we're going to be doing in the, for the rest of the semester. So you need to be able to do it for the project, at least. You know, figure it out. And of course, you can always ask a question. Let's go over the steps of the hypothesis test. 
our request request page. All right, so the five easy steps of hypothesis testing. I kind of want to go with four, but people have been using five for a while, and one of the steps is fucking stupid as shit. Like, we have fucking calling it a step is absolutely ridiculous. But the first step is one of the ones that is really important, and this is the step that is going to change for each hypothesis step, for each hypothesis test. each different type of hypothesis test. What is it? Identify the two claims. The old news claim or the old claim, that is our null or H naught. And it will have an equal sign in it. Common things for this one are proportion, mean, and standard deviation. Uh, there are tests that have variance, which is standard deviation squared. Uh, so we're going to kind of focus on these two. For an introduction to statistics and how, how hypothesis works, we're going to focus on these. Two. And what goes on the right side is the old value. Well, we think it is already. The new claim goes by H1 or HA. HA makes more sense because it's the alternate, but they were originally labeled zero and one, which I don't know why they felt like attaching numbers to them, but they did. Uh, this has an inequality symbol in it. It's either gonna have not equal to, it's gonna have less than, or it's gonna have greater than. And it's going to have the old value listed there also. The thing on the right side of these and the thing on the left should be equal. The only thing that will look different between the old claim and the new claim is the symbol. These are the only differences in those two lines. This claim here is the one we are gathering evidence to support. Or not support if there's not enough evidence.
Yeah. 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 Identify alpha, the level of significance. The problem might show either of those two things. It might say alpha, it might say level of significance. If it doesn't state it, use alpha equals 0 0.05. Steps one and two are like the pre-production steps. Or pre-experiment. You should have what you're, you're wanting beforehand. This is gonna be pretty important when it comes to project. Have an idea of what, when, when we talk about it, we're gonna talk about it next week. When you have it, come up like with your ideas ahead of time. Whether or not your experiment supports your, eyes, your claim is unimportant. You are not getting graded on if you were fucking right, okay? You're getting graded on whether or not you follow the steps of the hypothesis testing and, and statistics and you understand what was going on. I have had multiple times, repeatedly, students change their hypothesis test, these values, so that they're, they're, they were right and they support their claim. You don't need to do that. In fact, you learn more about life and shit like that when you're wrong than when you're right. So don't feel like compelled to change your claim after you've collected experimental data, if it doesn't support the claim. Just go, I was wrong. It's fine. Very few students do that. I always give huge pops to ones that do. Because most students change their data. They'll fucking just fudge it. You're not going to get marked down if you change it to support the claim, but you're going to lose my respect. Whether you care about that or not, I don't know. All right, so the steps that happen after that. Now, go up there and do the experiment. This isn't a step. Go out and do experiment and you got your data. So now that step's done. Now we start the step that happens that requires the data. Step three. Find the test statistic and p value. The only one we're going to use of this only one we use to make a decision here is p value. The test statistic is important for research and sharing with others. We 
when you share or publish your results. Now, I'm betting most of you in this room have very rarely ever had a student say, yeah, that's probably what my job is going to entail. But you never know. You might just end up with a job that you're doing. So you have some research and you're doing some statistical analysis. So it's good to know. Uh, the reason why is this allows others to try to reproduce your results. or try. It allows them to verify your work. If you like give out the data, they can verify it. Maybe your favorite thing about this step is StatCrunch does this shit. And it's easy as shit to do. Well, easy as pie. I'm going to say easy as pie. No, fuck a pie. Is a, making a pie is hard to do. It's easy as shit to do. Taking a shit is pretty fun. Well, I should constipate. There you go. You're welcome. Picture that operator. I was thinking. StackCrunch does this, and we'll just list them. We're going to just, just list them. You can simply put test stat and evaluate. OK, step four. This is a decision-making step. Decision time. Compare p-value and alpha. And I already told you what happens here. We've done the little jingle, but I'm going to write it again. There are two outcomes here. If the p-value is less than alpha, the p-value is too low. Reject the hope. If we reject the hoe, we support HA in our claim. Option B, the p-value is not less than, it's greater than or equal to alpha. This is the knots. It's not too low, I'm off screen. It's not too low. We do not reject a shot. We do not support HA. which makes our sentence kind of easy. There is not enough evidence to support the claim. Claim made by HA. I know some of my favorite classes have been when I talk shit about the professor too. 
I've had teachers that were like super fun and chill. One of them, uh, he was a chaperone for a math conference. And we were the, the three adult students, the ones that were over 21, and hit the chaperones went to a bar and played pool. And he was a math teacher. He taught trigonometry and geometry. And I made the assumption that he would be good at playing pool. He fucking sucked. And I fucking cried out with him. I'm like, you fucking teach this shit. Why aren't you any good at this? And he fucking flipped me off and I cherish that memory. It was such a fucking good time. He never, I, I got A pluses in the class. He didn't write me down. I was a great student. He knew I was fucking with him. As I knew Alfredo was fucking with me. All right, so uh, step five. Step five is stating our conclusion. Based on step four. If we had the scenario of A where the p-value was less than alpha or the too low reject the hoe, our statement needs to support HA. Go look at what you said for HA. Like your sentence should match this. And this, you should do this for either step. Do this for A or B. You want to know what you're talking about here. That's what we're talking about. So in this case, if we're going to say something like, uh, there is sufficient evidence or there is enough evidence to support the claim that, and this is where you want to uh, paraphrase HA or put it in words. There is enough evidence to support the claim that the deck was not fair and the probability of drawing a bl black card was not 50%. And then it's usually a good idea because people are going to look at this. This is what, like, if you're reading a research paper, you're reading the fuck, you're going to the result. You want to find out what the result is. Tell them what level of significance. At that alpha equals blank level of significance. You should have that in your sense. We're almost done. Uh, we'll do 10.2. I, I meant to get to 10.2 today, but this is the hard part of getting all this shit down and talking about it here. Doing the actual stuff and, and the problems is a lot easier. The other option when, was, when the p-value was not too low, it was greater than or equal to alpha, 
not too low. Uh, you can go with, there is insufficient evidence. If you like using the word sufficient and not, or insufficient, or if you're going in and by remembering that it's the not, there is not enough evidence to support the claim. That again, uh, put H A in words here. There is not enough evidence to support the claim that the deck was unfair. And again, be sure to add the at alpha equals blank level of significance. And here or here, we put the alpha we used in step two. Don't just use leave a blank, put the alpha you used. So we get a lot of like very wordy, like what's going on here. Jesus Christ, it took me three pages of writing on this. I'm trying to explain what, what you're looking for here though, so it's important. Uh, but a good takeaway is only H naught and H A change among all of our hypothesis tests. The eight different hypothesis tests we'll learn this semester. Every other step is the exact same. Steps two through five don't fucking change. You need to decide an alpha, you need to collect some data and then analyze it, get your, your alpha or get your p-value, you're going to compare p-value and alpha, and you're going to tell us what's the result of your, your study. And the H not H A change, not just based on whether it's a proportion or a mean or a standard deviation, it also changes if it depends on the number of populations or groups we're studying. Uh, so you'll see in chapter 10, chapter 11, 12, and 13, then we have all different setups here. But it's the only one that changes. And with that, get the fuck out. No, have a good weekend. Enjoy yourself. I will see you guys on Tuesday. We're going to talk projects on Tuesday. So you might want to be here. If you can be here that way, because it's a group project, you're going to work with other people. And it's a, we are going to give a presentation, not I'm going to write a paper for Jones to read. I'm not a fucking English teacher. I don't want to read paper. We're going to be giving presentations. You'll see. I think you'll find it not too bad.